Matt Reeves' The Batman is another example where, again, the Batman shines bright in the cinematic format. And getting to see this last March with uh, my normal cohorts, it's just George here, as well as a ton of my other friends. It was, despite his long time, an amazing film from start to finish. I cannot wait to see uh, where this Batverse has more to go as we go into the Penguin spinoff, as well as any upcoming Batman sequels. But for now, let's take a look at the Steelbook and, of course, the DVD, which um, I have for you both today. So looking ahead first at the DVD, which is the more affordable version of the film as well. It's currently costing around $20 at Target and Best Buy if you can locate it. Uh, Cover-wise, honestly, I'm going to be honest here. I really, really dig it. I really do. Nowadays, it's more common for majority of the major studios and their publisher to just reuse the theatrical poster and just call it a day. It's fine. I'm not really going to criticize that motif anymore, but... The fact that they just use something different with the DVD cover alone is honestly, I gotta give props to Warner Brothers and their publishing com company because they could have just repackaged any of the Batman theatrical posters. I would have been fine with it, but the fact they actually got like this very nice shot of Batman and Catwoman from the end of the movie, as well as the Batmobile and Catwoman, the Cat Cycle, let's call it, we'll call this the Cat Cycle or the Bat Cycle, I'm gonna call this the Cat Cycle. Uh, is pretty beautiful, so to speak. And on a sunset um, outlook, oh god, this looks this looks really beautiful. It really does. Um, side profile, you have the logo. I love the the Batman logo. It's very simplistic and it's also red. And if you don't know me by this point, I love me some color. I love me some color red. On the back, we see the synopsis. We see some of the promo images from the movie. And for DVD users, for the first time. In many, many DC films, you actually get one special feature. That's right, you're getting one. You get unpacking the icons, which is basically Gotham's heroes and villains. It's a documentary of sort where they talk about just bringing those characters from the comics into this new world of Gotham that they've created. So, honestly, I'm actually happy because, again, most DVDs nowadays just, you get the movie... Maybe if you're lucky, a commentary track, but that's about it. So you're mostly paying for the movie. So the value of the DVD in terms of like what you're getting has really been undermined in recent years. So the fact we even get something out of the DVD release. So even if you spend 20 bucks, you get a little bit of something. But the true price is here in the 4K Steelbook Edition. Let's go. So first of all, in terms of the cover, I honestly didn't know what I was expecting. The thing about Steelbooks in general, still now being a collector for more than about almost going into six months now, I'm always surprised on what type of design choices they'll make for, for the Steelbook, to be honest with you. So for this one, you get Batman out looking, I guess Gotham in this case, we'll just call it. And the cow is shaped like um, the Riddler's question mark. So honestly, that I thought this was pretty cool. I don't think it's the best one. I know there's a lot of other Batman steelbooks out there in terms of cover designs, depending on what region or what publisher you're getting it from. This is from the Best Buy line. So for me, I thought this was really cool. Um, side profile is the same, same logo font. And on the back, you get to see the bad logo and I guess the Riddler logo intertwined with each other. And you got this Riddler code schematic that you, you got to see during the marketing as well as in the movie itself. Hell, after the movie came out, just the marketing continued, which is surprising because normally when the movie comes out, that's usually the end of the marketing run for the film. You just let people see it in theaters, make as much money as you can, and then move on to the home media and streaming release. But this one, they've all, they kept this little game going, just teasing what the future has to hold for the Batverse. I'm not sure if I can translate this itself. I, I can tell it's a word. The Bat is... Okay, I'm just making some BS thing up. Uh, well, I can tell like it's something with the Bat. I, I can tell with that. Um, on the inside, you get three discs. You get the 4K Ultra HD movie disc, the Blu-ray disc, and a, and a special features disc. Um, so that's pretty cool. So the Batman 4K one is in all black. The Blu-ray one is in all red. And the special features is all green um, in the Riddler's text font. So that's cool. Um, so what you get in the special features, if I have to read the J card correctly, you get a vigilante in the making, deleted scenes, the car, a car chase documentary, um, the Batman Genesis, and so on and so forth. This has over two hours of special features that's only on the Blu-ray disc. It's not on the 4K Ultra HD disc, so if you're hoping to see Robert Pattinson's beautiful face in 4K, you're sadly going to have to stick with the Blu-ray one. But in terms of Steelbooks, I think it's not the best Steelbook I've ever seen. I think it's still pretty solid. The all-black design is pretty cool. The the Actually, the rain effects they put on 
the cover is actually it actually shows pretty well on here in the steelbook. I like the finish of this. It's it's this new type of steelbook that um I guess I mean I, I say like it's new because I, I just started collecting, but it feels different. It feels a little a little bit more smoother. I'll say that. But honestly, in terms of steelbook design, I think it's all right. It's not the best in the world, but it's still pretty good for the film it's trying to represent. The Batman was something wonderful to experience in the movie theater, but the 4K Blu-ray is the closest thing that you're going to get to seeing it in the movie theater in the modern day. The filmmaking for the Batman is pretty interesting. What they did was film it digitally at 4K, so it's a native 4K movie. But what they did after that was they transferred the digital footage to a physical 35mm film stock, and they scanned that 35mm film stock back. So basically what it did was it added a very fine layer of grain to the movie, which I think really helps it. It gives it a nice retro depth to it. The disc is pretty interesting too. Apparently the disc is a new type of 4K Blu-ray disc that's able to hold a lot more information. So because the only thing on the 4K Blu-ray is the movie, no special features or anything like that, that gets its own disc, because of that, they were really able to compress it way less than a movie usually does. Every movie has to get compressed at least a little bit when you put it onto a disc, but with this movie, they got to compress it less. So you get more details and less digital artifacts and all that kind of stuff. So on top of having a very uncompressed video file on the 4K Blu-ray, we also have Dolby Vision and HDR10. And for the audio, we have a Dolby True HD 7.1 audio track. The HDR and the Dolby Vision really go to show for this movie. It is a really good looking movie when it comes to the dynamic range and the colors. The colors, they pop, but they don't pop out too much where it looks like oversaturated or anything like that. We're still talking about Batman, which is a pretty dark movie, but the colors are certainly there and they're certainly noticeable, especially on a beautiful TV. In terms of the story, I think the story was great. Uh, utilizing the Riddler, which was has never been done in film since... Batman Forever, that that was a film by Jim Carrey. This was a bit different. This Riddler was a bit more inspired by our real world. I think I think the director used the Zodiac Killer, which I also saw the movie Zodiac, by the way. So I definitely know, knew the callbacks they were making to. And just seeing, the, this, this was the perfect story for this time period, where you haven't established Batman, like, this isn't an, an origin story. This definitely is a, I don't know what, everyone keeps saying, Batman Year 2, Batman Year 2. I'm like, bruh. Can you make a year three already? Um, but you have a Batman that is more defined. He's not perfect. He's not perfect. Um, you, you still have some growing pains to go for. There's still a lot more lessons. I, I feel like hypothetically when we reach the end of the Batverse, whenever that is in the far future, there's definitely going to be a idea of like, this is the perfect Batman or this is the best Batman that, th that this interpretation can lead them to. But as of right now, you have enough where it's like, he's still making a couple mistakes. And they're allowed to, to work with that. That, you know, he's not a perfect superhero. He's or a perfect hero, or a perfect vigilante, whatever you want to classify him as. He's not there yet. He's still working towards that. And him going into conflict with the Riddler definitely is like that. Like, this is the moment when he realizes this is the next step in his story. This is the next step where he needs to go to that he's going to face more crazier criminals down the road. And no pun intended. And, Honestly, that, that is one of my, my one of my negatives on the thing. Like the only two, I only had two negatives with this thing, and I'm gonna try and be as vague with spoilers as we, as I possibly can. There is another character that I won't mention their name, but I was very very disappointed by their inclusion. I I personally, if you know what I'm talking about, you know. For me, I just felt like the character has been overdone at this point. Um, by that point, like you probably guess who I'm talking about, but it just as much as I'll give another actor or another actress a I'm going to keep it vague there again. Um, the, t the opportunity to be able to explore that character and see what their take could be on it. I feel like I ju we just seen way too much of it in nowadays. Like, it's just too often we see this exact same character played in different variations. I'm not, I'm not denying that, you know, actors play the character differently. I'm not trying to say that at all. It's just seeing the same and, like... I want to see other villains. I want to see Court of Owl. I want to see Hush. I want to see Killer Crawl. Maybe a new version of Bane. Maybe a new version of Race because we didn't get them as much before. I mean, we. I think out of every character I've ever seen in a comic book movie, he's probably the the most acted upon character in the history of the comic book movies, next to Batman itself. 
Um, again, that's not meaning to be an insult. It's just saying that I am a little bit tired of it, and I would I would appreciate it. Like maybe we kind of forget about him in the sequels. Well, let's let's just say that that's my personal preference. But like you know, whatever the story dictates, whatever the writer and also Matt Reeves decides to do, I trust in his vision. But uh, that's just my one takeaway from the movie that I just didn't really like at the end. Like it didn't bring down the overall movie's impression, but it definitely did. Like kind of scared me for where the future could take them next. Where it's like. We're never going to get this thing. And it's like, as much as it's, it's been cool and, and seen before, how many times more can we see the same interaction being different, mind you, but just seeing the same characters see each other again? Like, how much more can we take of it before? Like, maybe we need to take a break. Another thing, it's, uh, and I keep comparing with the Spider-Man Home movies, is that at least they, for the first, two, the first two movies, they gave a chance to give other villains a spotlight instead of reusing villains from the previous two series. I'll give them credit there. But we'll, again, we'll see how the sequel do does. We'll see. There's still a lot we don't know about what the future might hold. But for right now, for this movie, the Batman is the best Batman movie since the Dark Knight trilogy. Does it top the Dark Knight trilogy? Well... <laughs> Those are two different beasts, and I really hated like people compare the two. Like they're two different things. They're very similar, but they're two different directions. They're two ver very different told stories. And for me, the Batman is definitely one of the best comic book movies in recent years. For me, I think everyone did as best as they could. And remember, this is only the first movie. Wait till the sequels, because I kid you not, they have an upward trajectory to go with here. I can't, I will bet a pineapple pizza that the sequel will be better than the first. I'm gonna bet that. And if I'm wrong, well, I'm screwed again. But anyway, um, Batman, the, a great movie, amazing movie. If you are a fan of the character, if you're a fan of superhero movie, or if you're just looking for a, a long three-hour movie to watch, this is the perfect movie for you. It really is. Um, so, yeah, I give him, I recommend it wholesome. So go check it out. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching our Batman Steelbook unboxing slash DVD review of sorts. Um... We always do many more cool things on the Collection Compass ch channel, so go check it out. If you want to see more Steelbook unboxings, we have tons already on the site, so go check it out as well. Uh, but again, please subscribe if you have not yet to the Collection Compass. Please also like, favor, share this review if you want to. Please also follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates we may have for the channel. Ring the bell for notification when our next video is live, which normally you get one per week. Um, but until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.